In World War I, millions of soldiers confronted the brutality of mechanized warfare, enduring relentless artillery barrages, continuous machine gun fire, and the horrors of burns resulting from various combat situations. Those on the front lines often suffered horrendous injuries, and the sheer number of people left maimed by the war expedited the development of plastic surgery, aiming to restore both form and function to those affected. One of the earliest instances of prosthetic body parts dates back to ancient Egypt, some 3,000 years ago. An Indian physician named Sushruta authored one of the first collections of medical procedures called the Shruta which included reconstructive surgeries like skin grafts and methods to reconstruct noses. During the Middle Ages, knights and nobles often incorporated non-functional prosthetic limbs into their armor to conceal previous injuries. Although these prosthetics lacked functionality, they served to cope with societal shame associated with such wounds. However, no conflict resulted in as many injuries as the First World War. Most injuries during battle were caused by small firearms and stab wounds. However, this war marked the first major conflict between developed nations employing industrial warfare. The total mobilization of manpower and machines intensified warfare to unprecedented levels, with relentless artillery barrages, machine gun fire, and lethal war machines like planes and tanks. Consequently, millions died, and tens of millions were injured. For surgeons accustomed to dealing with smaller arms fire and bayonet wounds, the injuries inflicted during this war were on an entirely different scale. The trench warfare protected bodies to some extent, but the heads above the parapets were vulnerable targets. High-speed debris and shell fragments caused significant damage to soldiers' heads and faces. At the war's outset, facial injuries were challenging to treat properly. Surgeons attempted to repair wounds, but this often resulted in contorted faces for those who lost eyes, noses, and jaws. These soldiers faced a bleak fate, unable to recognize themselves and fearing societal rejection upon their return home. They understood that society would likely shun them for their disfigurement, and their families might struggle to accept them. Finding employment also became a daunting task. Harold Gillies, a New Zealand surgeon sought to address this situation on a grand scale. Gillies pioneered the use of skin grafting on a massive scale for reconstructive surgery. One of his successful procedures involved utilizing a pedicle, a large flap of healthy skin connected to the donor site, to reconstruct the injured person's face. By maintaining the blood flow through the pedicle, the chances of the body accepting the skin graft increased significantly. Among Gilly's famous patients was Walter Yeo, who served on the HMS Warspite during the Battle of Jutland. He suffered severe cordite burns that left him without eyelids. Gillies employed his new procedure on Yeo, where a mask of skin was transplanted across his face and eyes, creating new eyelids and rebuilding his damaged face. The process required months of surgeries and multiple procedures, and although there were complications, Yeo survived and lived until the age of 80, even rejoining the Royal Navy. Gilly's work extended well beyond the First World War and into the Second World War. Between the wars, he traveled the world, teaching his plastic surgery procedures and establishing his private practice. During the Second World War, he served as a consultant to the British Armed Forces and trained other surgeons in his techniques to assist the injured. Another notable form of prosthetics involved providing masks to soldiers with facial injuries. Francis Derwent Wood, a British sculptor, pioneered this development. Initially, Wood used his artistic talents to create sophisticated splints for amputees. However, he soon realized that his skills could be more valuable for those with severe facial injuries. In 1916, he established his own unit to create masks, typically made from tin or copper, for soldiers with facial disfigurements. Each mask was crafted from a plaster cast of the patient's face, and would skillfully rebuild the patient's lost features. The masks were then painted to match the patient's skin tone, creating a seamless transition. 
Wood's work inspired other artists to contribute their talents to similar endeavors. American sculptor Anna Coleman Ladd collaborated with Wood, further refining and improving the process. Ladd's masks were known for their exceptional realism. She even traveled to Paris to establish her own production of masks, often incorporating human hair to recreate eyebrows or mustaches. These masks were often attached to a person's face using glasses, much like the character Richard Harrow in the television series, Boardwalk Empire. It is crucial to recognize the contribution of the men who undertook and performed these surgeries. They should not be remembered as oddities, but as individuals who aimed to restore what was lost to those who deserved it most. The soldiers returning from the horrors of World War I were physically altered and viewed as others, different, and lesser. Many struggled to reintegrate into society due to either psychological or physical injuries, or both. Understanding the development of modern plastic and restorative surgeries is vital in comprehending the challenges faced by these soldiers. Even to this day, individuals with facial disfigurements are often typecast as villains, perpetuating the stigma they faced upon their return from war. Let us honor and remember those who strive to rebuild these men's bodies and lives, providing them with the chance they deserve to live with dignity and acceptance.